You are watching TFI. For Autodesk University Las Vegas 2018, I delivered a 90 minute industry talk titled Buying the Right Workstation for Autodesk Inventor, which I later re recorded in its entirety and put up onto YouTube to my channel. The link can be found up here. However, that 90 minute video is far too long to expect most people to sit through to get out of it what they want. It goes into extreme detail about what things mean and why things are the way they are. So for this one, I'm taking that video and I'm condensing it right the way down. And I've gone off camera, you don't need to see my face for the rest of this, but just so you know, this is entirely based on professional workstation parts only, vendor OEM builds, not DIY gaming grade build it yourself stuff, it's for enterprise clients really. Uh, but the guide could also be applied to Fusion 360 as it shares a similar back end to Inventor and they both run on the Autodesk One graphics system, but given that the, given the smaller portable hobbyist nature of the typical Fusion 360 end user versus the bigger Inventor enterprise or corporate end user, it's not reasonable to expect the budget for hardware to be the same across Fusion and Inventor users, but in principle, the same logic applies to both products for the most part. So with that out of the way, let's get into it, mate. So you see this HP workstation on screen right now. It does not matter if you're on the Forbes rich list, mate. It doesn't matter if your name's Andrew and Agnost, Michael Dell, or Dion Weisler. There is nothing you can buy today for any price that will run Inventor better and faster than this box right here. And this is only around two to two and a half thousand dollars, give or take. And what might this be? I pretend to hear you ask. Well, the brand on the case doesn't make any difference to the real world performance. You can spec the internal parts into most of the big name enterprise workstation brands. But manufacturer part refreshes will likely supersede some of these parts very soon. But the spec is Intel Xeon E2176G, 6 core CPU, 3.7 gigahertz base, and a 4.7 gigahertz boost clock. The Xeon E218. 6G as opposed to the 7 6G is marginally better, but at this level it's going to be barely noticeable. 32 gig of DDR4 2666 megahertz ECC RAM, 512 gig PCI Express NVMe solid state boot drive, secondary SATA based 512 gig solid state drive for data storage with an NVIDIA Quadro P2000 five gigabyte graphics card. So why is this the best for Inventor when clearly these are not the most powerful parts the money can buy? Well, let's get into it. Autodesk Inventor is almost entirely CPU bottlenecked, even down to its graphical performance. Nearly all tasks within Inventor scale in a perfect linear fashion with CPU clock frequency. In other words, the CPU that you choose will completely dictate how well Inventor performs in all areas. In other words, the CPU is by a Brexit country mile the most important part of any Inventor workstation. So when choosing your CPU, there's a couple of really important things that you need to look out for. First, always choose the latest generation of that CPU. For example, four gigahertz from six years ago is not the same as four gigahertz today. Second, and most importantly, make sure you pick the CPU with the highest bass and turbo frequency. And finally, as things stand today, the CPUs advertised with the highest frequencies tend to have between four and eight cores. That's perfectly fine for regular inventor modeling and drafting with occasional infrequent rendering and simulation workloads. But if something like rendering or simulation or CFD is a massive important part of your work and you do that a lot, consider a CPU with more than eight cores. But this is where it becomes a bit of a balancing act though. The more cores you have, the better it'll be for those other tasks and the more expensive the CPU is gonna be. But on the flip side, the more cores that a CPU has, the lower its clock frequency is. So Inventor's core modeling workflows will then take a hit. But whatever you do, try to avoid CPUs with a base or a turbo frequency of less than three gigahertz. Keep it above that and keep it new. And then you can check the Intel Arc website as well if you need to. In summary, Inventor is overwhelmingly single threaded, which means for the majority of your working day, you could have six cores, but Inventor is only ever really using one of them for the most part. Here's a screen grab of Inventor whilst I was waiting six minutes for it to open up an assembly. So it's as simple as this. If you're stuck to using one core, that core needs to be as fast as possible, which is why going for the highest clock frequency yields the best performance. And if your name is Elon Musk, and you can afford a 100 grand supercomputer with 128 cores, those cores are going to be slow. 
Inventor will just use one of them and choke along slowly, so my cheaper PC will run Inventor faster than yours, Mr. Musk, and it really is as straightforward as that. Now, Inventor does have a few modules which can actually use all the cores of the CPU at once, but again, that's a long story discussed in the main video, but at the moment, you're far better off with one strong big punch than lots of weaker little jabs. Uh, and regarding i7 or i9 versus Xeon, that whole debate, you'll have to see the original video for that as well. As for the RAM or system memory, well, the world has moved on fast, mate. Many old school IT guys out there still consider 32 gig of RAM as being astronomically high, prestigious and wholly unnecessarily for the common person. Well, it's really none of those things and under no circumstances should you ever consider less than 16 gig of RAM for a 3D CAD workstation. And to be unapologetically blunt, this is your workstation. Just put 32 gig of RAM in it. Based on current specifications, it will typically be DDR4 today, around 2666 megahertz. And it doesn't matter for 3D CAD whether you opt for ECC or non-ECC RAM, but I usually do go for ECC RAM. And as for storage, here's another point of contention. I recently read an article written by, quote, experts, which still, even today, peddles the daft notion that solid state drives are still some kind of exotic rare precious goods obtainable only by the super rich and how most people can only afford one if they're one of the chosen ones. Get a grip man, give yourself a shake, it's 2019, it's not 2006 anymore. Look on screen, here's a 120 gig solid state drive for 17.99, that's less than the price, I kid you not, of a Domino's pizza. For your workstation though, choose the option for a PCI Express based NVMe solid state drive as the Windows boot drive. Uh, they're usually the M.2 form factor and branded as something like a, an HPZ turbo drive or a Dell high performance drive, something like that. You can of course opt for the lower performing SATA based solid state drives and going for those won't cause Inventor to load or save its files any slower. But I'm not doing this as a how to cut corners and pay the least amount of money guide. Uh, but going for the faster PCI Express based storage will yield an overall faster and more responsive system on the whole. And contrary to the advice from our friends over at SolidWorks, you can indeed inexpensively add in another solid state drive as data storage, or you could add in a larger mechanical hard disk instead as a secondary drive. As for the graphics card or the GPU, this is of course a huge subject with much information flying around out there. I spent a lot of time presenting benchmarks and conclusive material in the full length version of this guide, but in brief, for Autodesk Inventor, the GPU is, for the most part, redundant. It does nothing. It does not in any way contribute towards the graphical performance with an inventor. Not at all, not one single bit. It doesn't matter whether you have a cheap GeForce 970 GPU or a top tier 2080 Ti, a Titan RTX, dual quadro RTX 8000s, you could have a $300 graphics card or 20 grand's worth. Inventor will perform exactly the same. You see, unlike traditional games which leverage the onboard power of the GPU, Inventor just doesn't. It uses the CPU to accelerate its graphical output. And you can see by this chart here, the frames per second output by Inventor scales almost one to one with the CPU overclock. The higher the overclock, the higher the FPS output. And as shown by this clip here, swapping between a Quadro P2000 to the higher end Quadro P5000 yields exactly a zero FPS increase in said FPS output. Pretty conclusive, wouldn't you say? So shouldn't we all then go out and buy the cheapest, dirtiest, low-end bargain bin GPU for our inventor workstations? No, not quite, for two reasons. First one being video RAM or VRAM. Although having oodles of VRAM doesn't make anything go faster, if you run out of VRAM, you're gonna be in for a bad time. Using things like multiple monitors, which most people do now, 4K monitors, having tons of things open at once, all these things gobble up the VRAM. And with modern GPUs now having stacks of it, developers aren't really shy with going ham on it either. And second, you might not even realize it, but you may use other professional applications which actually do require a decent GPU. And buying a super cheap low-end GPU may be fine for Inventor, but as a result, you could then be crippling something else that you need to run well. So indeed, VRAM is the main consideration here. Under no circumstances go for a GPU with two gig of VRAM or less. And if you have a GPU right now with two gig or less, I 
probably bet that a lot of problems that you experience in 3D CAD are because of just that. And as a minimum, you want four gig of VRAM on the Quadro line of GPUs. The Quadro P2000 is very reasonably priced and has five gig of VRAM. Stay away from the P1000 though, as it's extremely weak and other applications may suffer as a result. I normally purchase the P4000, which is eight gig of VRAM, but it's double the price and then there's the new Quadro RTX 4000, which is the successor, but that's even more expensive again. If you're into your AMD graphics cards and products, their Radeon Pro WX cards are very reasonably priced in comparison to the Quadro products, but historically, uh, they've had sketchy driver reliability, and that's always put them in a disadvantage. And whilst I'm sure they're fine now, for me, I always deck an office out with Quadros and pay just a bit more for it. And as for the GeForce or Quadro argument, well, this is a two-hour discussion any day of the week, so I just can't go there now. GeForce cards are 100% supported by Autodesk for use with Inventor, but that support does have its limitations. And you'll see no performance or visual benefits, actually, when you're using a Quadro, but me, I always buy GeForce cards for myself at home. As an individual, it's hard to justify the price point of a Quadro, but never once have I ever and never will put a GeForce card into a professional office uh, for a client. We can discuss this offline till the moon turns blue, but for reasons that I aggressively stand by, even though indeed they don't tangibly bring any gains to Inventor, I will always spec Quadros into professional workstations for engineering businesses. And as it stands today, the sweet spot is the Quadro P2000, or if you can stretch to it, the Quadro RTX 4000 for potential maybe future RTX support within 3D CAD. So there you have it, mate. That's as brief as I can make this without leaving you with more questions than answers. It's a tough topic to cover due to the sheer amount of what abouts, and I've heard this and that, but taking all that into account, the fastest Xeon CPU, the right amount of RAM, optimum storage, adequate GPU, it's all in here. And short of building something yourself, which I personally do, but I never will for a professional office, this right here is the right workstation for Autodesk Inventor and the best that money can buy today. So thank you very much for watching, and if you're not already, please do subscribe to the channel. I've got a back catalogue of over 350 mostly invented tutorials and tips, amongst other things, with plenty more to come. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.